Are we recording? We would like to remind you at this time to please turn on all recording devices. Thank you. Assuming a lot of you guys out there in TV land have never heard of Hit Record, so let me catch you guys up. It was back in 2005 that I first started Hit Record with my brother, Dan. And I have his Kermit sock on on the left and his pink Chuck sock on the right. And then in 2010, we launched it as what we call an open collaborative production company. Open meaning anybody can contribute. Collaborative meaning we use the internet to work on our projects together. And production company, because that's what we do. We've screened our short films at Sundance and other festivals. We've published books. We've put out records. We've gone on tour. But it's all been leading up to this. Now we get to hit record on TV. Everything you're going to see on this show is made collaboratively by a community of hundreds of thousands of artists from all over the world, and each episode is going to be revolving around a different theme. So I figured, since this is our first ever episode, our show tonight will be regarding the number one. Numero uno, the champion, the guinea pig, pulling on a one-armed bandit with a one in a million shot at getting out of this one-horse town. They say one is the loneliest number, but this one contributor on the side who goes by Jay Belt, he wrote, anybody who thinks that one is the loneliest number has never had to be the third wheel. <laughs> he said three is the loneliest number. One is great, two is company, three sucks. The number one can mean unity, like all for one and one for all. And you can ask a Taoist monk or a quantum physicist, they'll tell you the same thing. Everybody, everything, everywhere is all one. The number one also makes you think of your first time. There's a first time for everything, and you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Do you remember your first time? And, I mean, your first time doing anything. I will never forget the first time. My first time. The first time. The first time. First time. My daughter first hugged her baby brother. My first time in the American grocery store. It was humongous. It was quite scary for us. The first time my son asked, Daddy, is this your music? The first time. A girl ever told me that she loved me. It was really embarrassing. And then he starts dancing like this. He goes, Daddy, I like your music. It was a lot of fun. I'd do it again. This one young lady on the site, she goes by Roswell Gray, and she contributed a true story about the first time she ever saw the stars. I actually typically cruise hit record for writing prompts, and I saw the first time collaboration. What has it been like seeing this story of yours adapted into a short movie? It's amazing. As soon as I saw that, I called my mom uh -huh. and my dad to tell them what was going on. Like, my mom screamed for half an hour, and she finally manages to tell my dad what's going on, and I can just hear him in the background go, who the fuck is Joseph Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> Based on Roswell Gray's writing, we got a whole bunch of voiceover contributions, and I ended up choosing one from Scotland. We shot the actors, Elle Fanning and James Patrick Stewart, in front of a green screen. Then a slew of visual artists drew in the world around them. Musicians joined in to play the score. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present our first short film of the season. Watch this.
When I was 16, I saw the Milky Way for the first time. I was six months old when I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. I'm lucky. The type that I have is not the most vicious or devastating. It means that I'm night blind, that my peripheral vision is slowly narrowing into a pinhole, and that my depth perception is gradually flattening away to nothing. My cousins and I used to go out and lie on sleeping bags in the back of a pickup truck and watch meteor showers. They would watch, I would stare up into the black sky and study the seven bright points of light that I could see and wonder what it was like. Then my dad. My father ordered a pair of Russian night vision goggles from a military surplus catalogue. He said he wanted to watch his sprinklers at night and make sure they didn't get plugged by debris in the irrigation water. But he also knew what a gift it would be for me. When the package arrived, I spent the day reading the instructions over and over again, waiting for night to fall. Then finally, the sun went down, Dad turned off our yard light, and we went outside. I put on the goggles and looked up into the sky. <laughs> it was a personal miracle. Stretching above me in uncountable points of light as far as I could see, there were stars. Some of them clustered so tightly together they made swirling patterns of white against the inky darkness. I stared. I'd had people describing the stars to me all my life. And what I'd come to realise was that everyone tells you something different because they all see them in their own way. But none of what they had tried to describe to me could possibly match the glittering arch of that night sky. I still wasn't seeing what others would have. Even with the assistance of night vision goggles, there would be stars too dim for my eyes to perceive. Then too, there was the matter of that green wash of colour over everything. It didn't matter. I was breathless under an arm of the Milky Way that I'd always simply had to take on faith was even there. My dad had done what all good fathers promise their children they'll do. He gave me the stars. This is the countdown, but it don't need to be done. Cause you could have arrested in numbers, just give me that one. One, one, one. one used to be the loneliest number. On top, never taking the sun to one, 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 one. one. Number one isn't the loneliest number, it's the phoniest number. You're on top, top, and you drop to the bottom. Oh, the loneliest number. Yeah. One, 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 one. one. No, die solo, speed through the slow mo. Get esprimero, comma. Soy el numero uno, centrano caballero. Jefe de lo jefe, done, da, da, mero, mero. Number one, number one, number one, number one. Number one. one. Are we recording? Welcome back. Again, our show tonight is regarding the number one. One. So I was talking with a friend of mine, the uh, documentarian Davis Guggenheim, about the number one, and he brought up this thing called the Pando Forest which is this forest out in the middle of Utah, 40,000 trees that are all connected by one giant root structure, and they all have the exact same DNA. So scientists call it one living organism. I thought this was fascinating, so I started a collaboration about it. This is a request. Has anybody heard of this thing called the Panda Forest, and what do you know about it? 80,000 years ago, the panda forest consisted of a single tree. Our ancestors would have been migrating out of Africa around then. One original tree sent out an ever-expanding root system. New shoots come up, and those in turn become new trees. Panda is also known as the trembling giant. They're known to whisper to each other. It was all sounding kind of beautiful. A couple guys even drove out there and shot some pando footage. We're here in the pando forest. Johnny's got his adventure hat on. You're darn right I do. But then a contribution came in from a guy named Saint Maker. There's a larger living organism in the United States, the honey mushroom. 
It's a giant mushroom covering 2,200 acres in the Mount Hur National Forest in Oregon. It started as a single spore, then it spread and spread. Now it's killing all the trees around it. The honey mushroom has to kill to survive. So this honey mushroom is sort of like the Pando Forest's evil twin. Obviously, we had to find out more about it. So I went to the Mount Hur Forest in August at a place called the Humongous Fungus. It mostly grows underground and consumes things from beneath the surface. It's devouring everything. And they're parasitic. Leaving large grooves of dead trees in its wake. So every single tree of the Pando Forest and every single mushroom of the honey mushroom are genetically identical. Now, human beings, we are not connected by a massive underground root structure, but Everyone in the human race, every single person, is 99.9% .9 genetically identical. So if we are kind of like one single living organism, I guess the question is what kind are we? Life-sucking mushroom kind or the harmonious forest kind? I don't have the answer, I don't know, I just... I'm asking. And now it's time for a cartoon animated by one of Hit Record's brightest stars, ladies and gentlemen, the anonymous virtuoso, Wiro. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, hi, Joe. So, Wiro, tell us how you came up with this idea. Uh, well, the theme number one gave me this idea of unity, and I thought of different kinds of divided people that have to band together as one to defeat a common enemy. I immediately thought of musicians, and what common enemy would a bunch of musicians have, if not silence? Sounds good. You ready to show it to the world? Joe, I am 100% not ready. Wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you one song. Many songs ago, music was born into silence so as to fill the universe with song. But silence was angered by this disturbance of his slumber and vowed to eat up all the melodies that music was creating. And so music flew from land to land, blessing its inhabitants with her gift, so that they may one day unite in song to answer the threat of silence. Friends and musicians, this day is now upon us. I, the spirit of music, have summoned you all here to unite as one and defeat silence once and for all. You just leave this to us trolls. We'll summon a mosh monster to punch their bloke's bloody lights out. <laughs> oh, how Neanderthal. Besides, he's too strong. He'll just punch you right back. Let us, the princesses, summon our candy monster to rain down glitter over the beast. Ugh, what the hell is that gonna do? Besides, your manufactured attack will be way too predictable. We, the glooms, need to summon a bleak cloud of darkness to shower the beast with shards of melancholy. <laughs> yeah, that might work for a while, but he'll just snap out of it. Leave this to the engineers. Our high-tech robot will catch him off guard and shoot supercharged lasers at him. <sighs> A laser shooting robot? That's so commercial, it's never gonna work. Silence cannot be defeated by any single one of you. It will take all of your combined talents to create one song. Uh, am I really expected to compromise the purity of my music? Only with one song will you all prevail. Now go, prepare, and... Oh dear, he's here already. Good luck. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what we doing? Guys, I think I have a plan. Our high-tech lasers will shoot at his head To daze him, confuse him, and fill him with dread Now as he's angsty and confused A sombre cloud will depress his mood Then a marsh monster will take the stage you guys, we did it! <laughs> from that day forward, music was free to spread from land to land. Even silence found a place to play between the notes. And while the trolls, glooms, engineers, and princesses each went their separate ways to sing their separate songs, they were all remembered ever after for that legendary victory. United by the spirit of music, playing together as one. What a bunch of fucking sellouts.
What does that mean to you if I say number one? P. Okay, what else does it mean? My first kiss, it was the most romantic moment you could imagine. The water is glowing, we've been playing in the sand. I turned to him and I missed. You missed? <laughs> I got him kind of like between the lips and the nose. It was horrible. I love kisses between the lips and the nose. <laughs> What happened after that? Are you like, do you still keep in touch with him or? Yes, we are married. What? <laughs> that kiss was eight years ago this month. Let's hear it for us, shall we? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We got one more for you tonight. They do say one is the loneliest number, and you want to know who's lonely? Songwriters. After all, all alone is all we are. So I put out a request. I have an idea for a song in this episode about loneliness. So songwriters out there, this one's for you. I want the song to be called, You're Not the Only One. Lots of people wrote different versions of this song, and we took bits and pieces of several contributions and combined them. And two contributors are here with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Wonder Boy and Jersey Jump. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, man, you're looking sharp. Both of you, look at you guys. Wonder Boy wrote the chords that we ended up using for the song's chorus. You didn't necessarily want it to be kind of sad and dreary. You wanted it to kind of build up into almost like a celebration of the individual. And so the first thing that came to my mind was just something kind of happy and bouncy and skipping through daisies and all that whatnot. Jersey Jung wrote a melody that we ended up using for the song's verses. I sat at home and I was kind of thinking, like, what does loneliness sound like? And so in the chords and in the melody, I was trying to express kind of the ache of loneliness, but also some beauty and some hope. I wrote lyrics to go with their music, and we played it live on stage. But by the time we got to the first chorus, we were not singing alone. Here I sing out loud, is there anyone there? I don't hear a sound, I guess nobody dares. So who I sing a bit louder than I did before? Still no ring on my phone, no knock on my Just as I had closed my eyes and could no longer see you sing to me, you're not the only one.
Ladies and gentlemen, thus concludes episode number one. <laughs> See, there really is a first time for everything. And getting started, it's always the hardest part. Just walking up and saying hello. Once you start talking, it gets easier. Or sitting down in front of that blank page. Once you start writing, there's plenty to say. Or running your finger over that round red record button until just the right moment when you hit it. And then you know. This is just the beginning. We'll see you next time. Thanks again. Again, my heart.